It is not enough to say that Ray Comfort is an ignorant, arrogant airhead who is a victim of the very mindset that he endorses. Ray Comfort is not a mere victim in the game of disinformation. He is a deliberately dishonest snake oil salesman who knows exactly what he's doing. Ray may not know jack shit about science, but he does know how to manipulate a conversation and influence the opinions of his followers. If you're like Ray Comfort, and as a result either don't know how to conduct honest research or don't care enough about the facts to do your homework before making a documentary, you'll be content with asking random people on the street where they think the Earth's water supply originated, as Ray did in his documentary, Noah and the Last Days. 70% of the Earth is covered in water. Where did it come from? That's a good question. That's, do you know? I have no clue at all. I was therefore surprised to see Ray Comfort do something uncharacteristic, and that was to interview an expert, Richard Bell, on the issue. I'm a professor of geology and oceanography at Cal State University, Long Beach. Bell, a PhD in earth science from UC Santa Cruz, has his name on over 100 peer-reviewed papers and has been cited approximately 2,000 times at the time of this video's release. When Ray asked him where the oceans came from, Bell's answer was a condensed version of the generally accepted scientific model on this issue. While the Earth was accreting, the impacts of planetesimals and meteorites transferred energy to the protoplanet, which heated the metallic, rocky ball until it became molten. As it did so, the denser elements like iron and nickel sank to form the planet's core, while the less dense silicates floated to the surface in a process called differentiation. When the meteoric bombardment ceased, the Earth cooled and released gases that condensed into clouds, which proceeded to rain for thousands of years. Even with this monumental downpour that puts the ridiculous flood myth to shame, however, this would have been enough to form only about half the water on the planet. The rest likely came from impacting comets, which are comprised of rock and water ice, though it is currently unclear whether asteroids may have played a greater role in creating Earth's water supply than comets did. In any case, water is not exactly a rarity in space. In 2005, NASA crashed the Deep Impact Probe into a comet nearly 7 kilometers wide, releasing 250,000 tons of water as it did so. Combined with the fact that the ratio of deuterium and protium on the planet is approximately half of that found in comets, the abundance of water in comets makes them a natural suspect for creating the half of the Earth's water supply that didn't form at the end of differentiation. When Bell told Ray all of this, however, it goes without saying that Ray wasn't pleased. After all, this well-substantiated model of reality with predictive capabilities, colloquially referred to as a theory, flies in the face of Ray's beloved bedtime stories, which according to Ray, allege that the Earth's water supply came from a global flood 4,000 years ago. So how does Ray respond to the cognitive dissonance that Dr. Bell imbued him with? With dishonest semantic word games, of course. A lot of the water came from comets. Uh, is that just a theory or is it a, a fact, well-known fact? Ray knows full well by now that theories are synthesized from facts, and that this model of the ocean's origins is no less a theory than is the theory that describes the behavior of electrons, but Ray has an audience of scientifically illiterate doofuses to pander to, and so pretends that he thinks, as many of them undoubtedly do, that a fact is somehow more epistemologically secure than a theory is, and that the two serve the same purpose. For whatever reason, be it a lack of patience or assertiveness to correct Ray on this point, Bell plays along and says that nothing about the origin of the Earth is a fact. To understand the slimy move that Ray pulls next, it's important to have some context with regard to the average creationist understanding of science. Creationists generally believe that if something is, quote, just a theory, then anyone is justified in rejecting whatever's being labeled as a theory out of hand. Their use of the word theory is far more relaxed and ambiguous than the scientific use of the word, and in spite of the fact that they generally have no trouble accepting germ theory, cell theory, atomic theory, the special and general theory of relativity, quantum theory, and the theory of general equilibrium, there is still a sizable number of creationists who reject evolution and the Big Bang on the basis that they're quote, just theories, and that any alternative view is equally valid, even if it's completely unsubstantiated. Now armed with the creationist perspective, one can understand Ray's strategy for arguing against the generally accepted model for the origin of Earth's oceans. First, Ray had Bell explain the theory to him. Then, he equivocated the scientific use of the word theory with the demotic use of the word, and finally the documentary cut to this scene. You're a, a science teacher. Yes. Do you think comets brought water to the <laughs> Earth? No. No? No. Basically, we can dismiss the model accepted by Dr. Bell and the majority of experts in his field because someone on the street who calls himself a science teacher disagrees. After all, it's just a theory, right? 
If someone else disagrees with it, then we're justified to do so as well, right? As a side note, we never learn who this guy is, what or where he teaches, or what his reasons are for thinking that he has insights that trump those of the academic community. For all we know, Science Teacher is this guy's stage name at the local strip club. But that doesn't matter to Ray or his intended audience. A guy on the street disagrees with something that's just a theory, so we should too. Ray made no attempt to argue against Bell's explanation, just as he made no attempt to argue against my explanation when he asked me the same question, opting instead to claim, erroneously, that science doesn't claim that comets helped form the Earth's oceans. How did we get 70% of the Earth being covered in water? The current uh, model that is describing that would be that comets hit the Earth and that's what created the oceans. So they had water on them? Sorry? Comets had water on them? Yes, comets are made of ice. And they hit the Earth and that's what gave us our oceans, our seven oceans? Pretty much. So 70% of the Earth was covered in water because of the Earth was hit by comets. Yeah, is that a problem? Yeah, it's, it's a problem for me because science doesn't say that happened. Ray knew that he's incapable of partaking in a discussion on science, so he did the only thing that he was capable of doing. He played a semantic word game to try to cast doubt on the scientific method. He tried to get me to concede that science does not know for absolute certain where the Earth's water came from. Only a Sith deals in absolutes. I strongly suspect that it was because I was prepared for his word games and attempts at equivocating scientific knowledge with absolute knowledge that I was not included in the final cut of his motion picture. If the infuriating and transparent dishonesty of Ray Comfort's pathetic word games and loaded questioning is not yet apparent, then have no fear. It only gets worse. Here's a question. Where did all the fish come from? There are 28,000 different species of fish, and then there's whales and dolphins and, uh, and uh, all these different sorts of fish. Do they come on the comets? Now in Ray's piddling pudding of a brain, this may seem like a reasonable question, but to a learned professor who deals with matters that require a bit more effort than standing on a soapbox and shouting one's opinions at passerby, to be addressed in this way is absolutely insulting. To address a scholar in this pretentious, juvenile, and downright reprehensible manner is to fail to recognize or care sufficiently about the amount of devotion that they have toward their life's work, as well as the amount of effort that they've put in to be an expert in their field. Ray Comfort, in addition to lacking academic honesty, integrity, and talent, lacks empathy. But Ray's insolence is only the tip of the iceberg. His question, while not even worth dignifying with a response, was not uncalculated. The question's simplistic phrasing and lack of context allowed Ray to spin the conversation like this. That's a silly question. Where did they come from? I don't understand what a silly question that is. Well, the oceans is... What, you're talking, you, th you think that animals are riding in on comets through the vacuum of space? No, no, I don't, I don't, question. I don't believe that, but where did all the fish come from? There are 28 thousand different species of fish in the oceans. Haven't you researched? I'm doing it now, I'm coming to experts. That's, um, you need to do your homework before you talk to experts. I have. Well, nobody knows exactly how and when life started on Earth, but it's entirely possible that the early prebiotic material, or even the first microbes, traveled to Earth aboard a, a rock of some kind and seeded the once barren ground with what would later become every species alive today. And there's the most despicable part of this exchange. In his original question, Ray specified thousands of species of fish, as well as whales and dolphins, before asking, did they come on the comets? At no point did Ray bring up microbes in his question because he was not interested in getting a serious answer. Once again, he was playing semantic word games. It's clear that Professor Bell had no idea that Ray was talking about microscopic organisms, and that Ray seemed to be asking if Shamu got here by riding on a comet. Ray didn't even bother to clarify that he was referring to microscopic organisms, he just kept asking where fish came from. To avoid looking like a complete retard, Ray later added in the subtitles so that we're aware of what Ray's malformed question is getting at, even though the professor does not. In literature, this is known as dramatic irony, but in real life, this is known as dishonest shitbaggery. Asking someone one question, then editing in a different question from what you asked, and using the person's answer to the original question as their answer to the revised one, is dishonest, and this isn't the first time that Ray has done this. I'll leave a link in the description box to a video that catches him doing this red-handed. 
I'll also leave a link to the May 2013 edition of the Smithsonian Magazine, from which the following quote was mined. The Smithsonian Magazine says, Water is so vital to our survival, but strangely enough, we don't know the first thing about it. Literally, the first. Where does water, a giver and taker of life on planet Earth, come from? Think about it. This quote was pulled from the introductory paragraph, in which the author, esteemed theoretical physicist Brian Greene, recounted the time when he asked his junior high school teacher where water originally came from, only to be answered with a blank stare. Given that the Smithsonian Magazine is not a peer-reviewed scientific paper, but a condensed pastiche of its contents for laypersons, and given that the following six paragraphs describe the story of water's origin from the Big Bang to comet or asteroid impacts on Earth, it's pretty clear that the mind quote in Ray's documentary was a statement that most people do not know where Earth's water supply came from. I'm willing to bet that most people also don't know why copper is so good at conducting electricity, but that doesn't mean that there aren't any experts in the field of, say, condensed matter physics who do know. The way that Ray presented this quote gives the false impression that scientists don't understand the origins of Earth's water supply. I mean, just look at the goddamn title! The text above it and below it couldn't make it any more clear that Ray completely took that quote out of context. This is as dishonest a creationist quote mine as I've ever seen. So let's recap. In less than four minutes of Ray's documentary, he has played semantic word games, equivocated scientific terminology, dishonestly edited an interview, and quote mined a scientific magazine, all to present his case that science hasn't drawn reliable conclusions concerning the origins of Earth's water supply. And all the while, he has worn his dishonesty like a badge of honor and his ignorance like a crown. Why, creationists? Why do you listen to this man?